And we're back with some more oxygen not included on the Badlands. Uh, Handily named The Good Place. Now, first up, though, I just want to take care of some problems that occurred last time that I didn't notice until I was going back over the footage. There's a abyssalite break here. There's an abyssalite break here, and the heat from this volcano is leaking into this uh, rust biome. So this should have been minus something degrees, but instead it's 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 heated up a little bit. We are going to send in our dupes immediately and cap that off with an insulated tile right there. That should hopefully seal in that heat. At the same time, there is another one up here. This one. This is the one I noticed that made me stress. Uh, yeah, there's a massive abyssalite break there. This entire place has been incinerated. It's two, three hundred degrees here. There's no way I can seal that off. The hole is just too big and the heat has already spread too far. We're just going to uh, not go near that area for like a really, really, really long time. That's pretty much all we can do. Oh, well. Uh, oh, and the best suggestion in the comments was to send Janet to go to the to the neural vacillator because, you know, Janet. Totally, you know, not a girl, not a robot. Let's see what kind of software upgrade she can get today. And we're done. Are we? Yep. Come on, what'd you get? Uh, deeper diver's lung. You know what? That's probably one of the best ones you can get. Uh, less oxygen consumption. I'm I'm well okay with that. Uh, let's uh, finish this off down here, and uh, then we can get on with uh, today's episode. Problem solved. That should stop any more heat from leaking out. And what the? Oh, pressure damage. I maybe pushed a little bit of ethanol down there. It's fine. So long as the heat has stopped, I think that whole thing is sealed in by abyssalite. Yep, we should be golden. Uh, next up. Yeah, there was some really good uh, ideas in the comments. Quick pause for a second there while I. I remember to do the research, so I kind of skipped forward in time while I've got the research knocked out. Research we were looking at was the automated notifier. This was recommended to me multiple times in the comments, and it seems like a really, really good idea. What you do is you get your automated notifier here. Let's just uh, let's check it there, I suppose. Uh, stick on an automation wire from here. Now, we're just going to hook it up to the first tank to start. Plan here is this should allow us to... It'll give off a notification when the liquid reservoir is full. I presume sends a green signal when... I think that this should work the way once it hits 100% it should give off the green signal. So as you said, uh, it'll have a green signal until it hits this point, so maybe I should be sticking on a not gate. But what we're going to try and do is just hit it so that once it hits 100%, it will give off a green signal, at which point this should give off a, a notification. We're going to have to do a little bit of testing with this to make sure it works. Oh, someone's trapped. Jason, how did you do that? Okay, buddy. That was, that was pretty dumb. They appear to have trapped themselves in a quite awkward position. And I'm going to take this slow because, uh, hmm, well, I don't want them getting too stressed out. They are going to get too stressed out, unfortunately. Oh, shit, yeah. Mind that out. We need some sort of materials. There's no materials around here for them to work with, so we're going to get them to mine that out. And once they've got that, obsidian ladder, obsidian ladder chunk, they should be able to hop out of there and get back home. Uh, I just don't want them having any mental breaks. I wonder what they're, they're destruct if they have destructive as a trait. You know what? Not going to worry about it. What, what are you doing? I, um, I might want to put them on a special schedule just to make sure they go back home and heal up. Actually, you know what? I trust you, Jason. You'll be fine. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, notifications. Let's set the, sort this system out, shall we? All right. I've done a little playing around, and I think we're going to need a not gate to make this work correctly. I'll come back to it in a bit. Uh, we've also got a blueprint we've got to take a look at. We'll take the snazzy suit. Yeah, we'll take the snazzy suit because snazzy suits are always good. Uh, I think, yep, yeah, Janet, definitely. Yeah, uh, with Janet wearing the snazzy suit, because of course she is, we've, yeah, I think, yeah, whether the plan, we're going to get oxygen up and running. Still want more of these uh, stone hatches. We just, we're not producing them fast enough. The one thing that was pointed out in the comments was, there is some sedimentary rock here. Sedimentary rock is what we can feed through regular hatches to increase their chances of laying stone hatch eggs, which is why there was actually more of that lying around the map. Uh, where is it? Yep. Yeah. It turns out I dug up some of it already, so we can take another stone hatch or another regular hatch, throw them in here, and maybe up our chances of producing some more uh, some more eggs again. What's this one at? This one's at uh, 14%. We'll grab a, a younger hatch and we'll dump them in there, and hopefully we can get this running even faster. All I did was put in a, a quick temporary hatch farm here. We're just going to have this one hatch in here. We're going to jam them or stuff them full of as much sedimentary rock as we can to hopefully up their chances. Once uh, once we've run out of sedimentary rock, we'll dump them in here with the other hatch that we've got. Uh, we should be able to squeeze out maybe a few more stone hatches to help our population improve. But with all of that taken care of, all of the little side projects and all of that done... Uh, actually, how's that over there? 
Yeah, we'll we'll let him finish that off. I think it's time we started on our main oxygen production facility. It's it's time to build the the full Rodriguez, and we've got a nice uh, bowl or depression here that we can build it into. So I'm thinking right here is where we're going to start. Uh, though we're going to need steel for that, and to make steel, we're going to need some eggshells, which we've been which we can grind up, and for that, we need the. <laughs> The rock crusher. So the rock crusher set to poke shells, uh, egg shells, uh, fossil to lime, you know, all the standard ones. But we have enough lime to start with that we should be able to make a fair chunk of steel. What we're going to do, though, is dump all of that heat into this tank. How much heat do we have to work with, though, is the question. Mm, not a lot. These things can survive from 5 to 30 C, and the water in here is about 25, 26 C. You know what? Should I have bricked that in? Ooh, I probably should have insulated that in. One moment. Maybe uh, we're going to get our dupes a little bit wet, but I think it's time we put some insulated tiles down here just to make sure that none of that, uh, so no more heat is leaking into our water tank. I might have wanted to do that earlier, maybe. Oh, great. I gave Jason and Eleanor hypothermia by letting them go swimming in the cold water. Ugh, that's what I get for my bad planning. Uh, well, it'll slow them down for a bit and it's going to increase their stress. I might want to put down a massage table just to help uh, people out during this slightly stressful time period. Wait, did I even research that yet? Uh, I've started doing oil. Maybe we should see if we've got uh, re massage benches. Is it bad that I have never, ever in all of my gameplay made a massage table? This is my first one. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to do is set it for break starts at... We're going to make that about 35? I don't know. Maybe I can let them go higher, but... Uh, we'll let them out when they're down to 10%. Just so that they're not coming and going constantly. Yeah, that should get Jason on the bench. Okay. Well, with all of that done, it's time to get our refinement on. For refinement purposes, we will just be... Well, we need steel. That's the only thing we can do. So, straight to one of these, it seems. Uh, we're probably going to have to put in power for it. And we can't rotate it. I keep forgetting. Uh, Plumbing-wise, I think we're just going to rip the water out of here and dump it right back into the tank. There we go. Power comes up here. Water comes up here. It gets dumped into the refinery. Then it just gets dumped right back out again. We don't want anything too complicated. We just want... Barely enough steel to get together our Rodriguez, and once we've got our steel, then we can go down to the oil biome and start doing proper steel production. Oh, we're going to need power for this as well, aren't we? So I'm thinking another similar power rate to these ones over here should be plopped down this side. There we go. Power, cooling, all in one. Plus, since we're just about to break into that ice biome over here, we can, we can take some of that ice and dump it into our liquid tank to help cool the area down if needs be. And, oh, and there's a lovely toxic area down here as well. With a morb in it. I didn't point that out last play too, but there's no way. I, I wanted to get my hands on that Dreco, but unfortunately, Drekos and Morb seem to be having a symbiotic relationship this round. But later. Later, we'll get our hands on that. Once. Once we've got our steel and we've got our Rodriguez up and running. Ooh. Exit. What have we got in the blueprint? Steel. Oh, come on, game. Just... Uh. Yeah, no, I don't care. I'm taking it. I know this is technically easy mode, but we've just started making steel, so why not? What's, what's like, is it? Cycle 99? Hmm. It was about the time we can start making steel. The game decides to give it to us. I'm not going to complain. 100 kilos is not going to be the worst thing in the world. Nope. And we'll set this to our usual settings of 6090. And we should be ready to start doing our refinement. Perfect. Uh, we've already got lots of iron, so we need iron to steel, which is going to require... Oh, yeah, we need refined carbon as first as well. Forgot about that. There we go. I stuck a couple of them over here by this pinch of pepper nut. It has temperature, body temperature problems, so uh, maybe we can help it out by throwing in some refined carbon nearby. A little bit of heat won't hurt it. In fact, it'll help it. Now, once we have that up and running, we're going to start doing some iron to steel. How much lime do we have for this? Enough for 17 operations? I'll take it. 1.7 tons of steel should be more than enough for our plans. Uh, actually, well, maybe not. It depends if I'm going to make the... Nope, not going to worry about it. We've still got plenty of eggs inbound, and we're going to have a lot more lime coming along, especially as this ranch expands. We may not be able to get all the steel we need to put this auction facility together right now, but what we can do is do some other projects on the side. Another one I want to do is start uh, automating even more... What's uh, 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 granite and everything falling here? And automate the distribu uh, distribution of that granite. A few suggestions were... Take this, put an auto loader pretty much here, load that up with uh, granite and have that granite circulated around on shipping rails to all of the other ranches. So all of the ranches sort of auto load or automatically get filled up with granite without any interference with my dupes at all, which I'm thinking is a really good idea. So while all of this refinement is going on, who's Glenn? Glenn, why are you refining? You're supposed to be our dedicated cook. 
Oh, there's there's probably nothing left to cook. Is there? Yeah, there's there's nothing left to cook. Is there? <laughs> Never mind. All right, then you go ahead with that. We are going to automate this up the wazoo. So this weird looking contraption is what we're going to be using. Very simple. Uh, granite will get picked up out of here and igneous rock, get dumped into the conveyor loader, and then it will sort of circulate around here and get dropped off at conveyor receptacles just outside the doors of every ranch, where every ranch can reach them with their auto sweeper. Mm. Now, how well this works out, we'll have to see. Oh, is that hatch almost done yet? How much, uh, what's your chance, chances up to? Stone hatch egg, 19%. You know what, we'll let you finish chow down on some more of that sedimentary rock, shall we? We've got plenty more to feed you. Um, but, ah, yes, that was it. Uh, we're going to have to select what goes in here. I'm thinking granite and igneous rock, though at the same time we will have to change these to do the same thing. And we'll also have to change these to do the same thing, just to make sure it's spread out nice and evenly. So, with all of that set up, all we need now is to dump an enormous amount in here. Well, an enormous amount of resources in here. And I'm thinking that Sweepy is a little bit too slow for this. I mean, Sweepy has been here for a long time, and they still have barely managed to make a dent in all the stuff that's up here. So let's maybe put in something a little bit faster. The plan is very simple. We are going to get everything out of here in... Well, once we get this up and running, hopefully a few minutes, we will just copy and paste these settings across. Oh, you know what? We're going to have to get rid of Sweepy. Uh, if we delete the Sweepy Dock, does it actually destroy the Sweepy? Or is the Sweepy Dock completely independent? I don't know what happens when the Sweepy Dock goes away. So as we'll find out in a moment, won't we? Oh my god, it just exploded. It just... It just popped. Wow. Um... Okay. Never mind, that's, that's how Sweepy's diet would appear. Well, um, we are going to copy those settings across there. Uh, forget all about what just happened, because that didn't happen. Uh, then get some power here for the moment. One second. I think this may overload my grid a little bit when I turn this on. I, but still, I want to see if it works. If this works, we'll just do this for every level, and we should be able to quickly strip out all of the granite. And I mean, there is so much granite around these areas. Right, let's hook this sucker up and see what happens. Keep an eye out there for power overloads, probably. Oh, no. No power overloads yet. What's the wire looking like? Energy. Oh, we're getting close, though. Oh, it's not too bad. And now, now we should have plenty of resources there. Let's let that, damn it. Where is it? Igneous rock. Yep, plenty. We should have more than enough resources to keep all of our hatches fed for a nice long time. Ah, what are you doing there? You know what? We will put you on one. Yeah, perfect. We might want to actually include with that obsidian as well. Actually, let's just take all of the raw raw minerals, uh, all of the metal ores, and all of the refined, you know, actually take everything. Consumable ore? Yeah, hell yeah. Everything goes down there. Where's the refined metals? Also all the iron, and we will copy those settings. Oh. Wait, no, this needs to be level two. Yep, yeah, that needs to be level two, so that doesn't interfere with the last one. Boom. That should get everything across done and dust it would you look at that that's far faster than sweepy i mean don't get me wrong i like sweepy but that that is just super quick uh you know what yeah deconstruct all yeah get rid of a lot of that done done and now we can deconstruct it and move it up to the next level is it a little bit time consuming to put it all together yes i think i'm going to have to reinstall the blueprints mod just so i can put this together much faster but this this was so simple. Oh my god, is this? One second. I think that was actually helping demolish itself. We say deconstruct that, but leave the auto sweeper. How would you look at that? It's helping carry itself across. How sweet. Well, enough, as fun of an experiment as that was, uh, let's make sure these are working. Oh yeah, all the auto loaders are full. And everything should be ready to roll out. Perfect. Oh, printing pod. Narcoleptic, Fletchment, uh, you know, I'd almost take the pacifist, but no, no, we are going to hold off on hiring anyone else until, until we've got our hatch farms up and running properly. How many eggs have we got floating around? Critter eggs, we have 14 hatchling eggs in there. Nice. All right. One minor issue, though, is I may be dumping a little bit too much heat in here. This is getting up to 35 degrees in spots. That will stifle our crops if we're not careful. Though, we're almost, we're, we're pretty much almost at the point where we don't care. Uh, we have 
mm, we have one and a half ranches full. Once we have three ranches full, we'll be producing enough food just from our ranches that we won't care about our crops anymore, at which point we can rip them all out. And for the time being, though, oh, I think our calories are going up. You know what? Let's uh, rip out some of these. There's no point wasting water. So let's start skimping a little bit here. Uh, no point getting too wasteful with this stuff. At the same time, let's dig into the ice boy biome, grab ourselves some of this tasty, tasty ice, and we'll just dump it into our water tank. Uh, we'll make it into a temperature shift plate. The water, it'll distribute its chill in there, and we'll destroy a whole bunch of that heat. Or, well, we'll even at the temperature in the tank. We're not going to create or destroy anything. We're just going to even at the temperature in the tank so the water in here remains below 30C. Just, you know, as a precautionary measure. Do Got distracted there doing some recording on the side. Well, some other stuff on the side. Missed some footage there. Uh, we installed a steel pump in here. I was trying to get that in ahead of schedule. And why is that not powered yet? Oh, yeah, I don't have the power cable hooked up. But, yep, the power cable is connected and the pump is connected. I immediately, once I realized I had to get that pump in before this water got any deeper, otherwise there's dupe is going to get scalded. But still, Eleanor got scalded. Thankfully, it turns out triage cots, you don't need research for them. You start with them by default. So we've got Eleanor on there and we've got her health should be going up at 75% a cycle. Their health will go up at 20 or 50, 50 points per cycle. Um, but if they get the received treatment as in a dupe comes along and taps their hand and goes there, there, they get an extra plus 25. So they should be back up and running in about half a cycle, which is great. Actually, wait, no, a little bit over half a cycle. Anyway, at the same time, it's time to start building our Rodriguez. So I've queued this up over here. And yes, I had to come back and watch one of my old videos to figure out what I was doing because I had completely blanked out to do this again. <laughs> Every time, I swear, I keep forgetting. Uh, you know what? We'll put in some expansion there so some oxygen can get down. I've also installed an oxygen diffuser here so we can turn the last of our algae into oxygen down this end because we're going to be down here for a while installing this whole monstrosity. Uh, gas pumps are made out of steel. Uh, the electrolyzers are made out of steel. And normally, I wouldn't even really get this down this fast. Uh, but we did get some lime out of the gateway, which, okay, it's a bit cheaty. But at the same time, we're still gaining lime from the eggshell. So I think, yeah, we got enough to make another piece of steel. You know what, let's, let's throw together another piece of steel while we're waiting. And we'll still get more and more. Right now, we've got four incubators up and running, which means we can theoretically hatch one egg every... Oh, that's not set up correctly. I could tell that was powering down completely. If you have, leave them on zero, sometimes they'll flatline out. Yeah, there we go. So at four uh, eggs, they uh, incubate at 25% a cycle once they're hugged. So we'll be having one stone hatch every cycle, meaning we can support a stable population of 100 stone hatches if we want to. We, we don't want to just yet. That's uh, a little bit too much. But we will be supporting up to 16 dupes, which means we'll need three hatches for each of them, which is 48. Wait, no. 68, 16, 24, 48. Yeah, 48 hatches. We're going to need 48 stone hatches to keep all of our dupes going. It... It's doable. It will definitely be doable. Right, we'll uh, we'll skip this forward a bit while we get the guts of the electrolyzer in place. Yeah, this is going to take a while. It's going to take a while. More steel. I can't turn that down. It just makes things faster. Um, Yeah, even if we didn't get be getting the steel, we'll still be getting through this at a reasonable rate. How are we looking on the steel front now? We've got... Oh, no lime. Come on, give me some more eggshells. Why do we not have more eggs just yet? We're up to five critters in that ranch and another eight in that one. Uh, though we still haven't... What's this one that? Stone hatch eggs chance 40%. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. Well, I suppose considering the amount of sedimentary rock we've been stuffing it full of, it's about time it started giving us some decent returns. Which reminds me, is that getting groomed? It should be getting groomed. Yes, it is groomed, it's happy, and it's definitely... Yeah, its reproduction rate is nice and high. Eh, well, in that case, let's get this Rodriguez out of the way. This has been going ahead quite well. We've tucked into the ice bi biome and we found some sleet wheat grain. You know, we can make some use of that. Uh, where is it? It's under seeds. Where is our sleet wheat grain? Never mind. It's under cooking ingredients. In that case, it should all get carried back to here. What are we looking at in cooking ingredients? Yeah, sleet wheat grain. Perfect. In that case, we are just going to make frost buns. Why not? We're not going to try and make anything too fancy just yet, but that should help supplement our food supply, which is... Actually... Mm, no, I'm not going to remove any more uh, gristleberry just yet, but this will definitely help with our food issues for a while. One thing I completely blanked while I was putting this together is I forgot to automate our food storage. <laughs> Oops. Um, uh, joya seeds? Yeah, you know what? Nope. Not getting any more dupes for a while. We should have automated our food storage so that it all got dropped down. It would have been awful, an awful lot more convenient. Let's take care of that now, shall we? And 
done-ish. All the cooked foods will get transported across here and dumped down into this corner. The auto super can't pick it up. All the food will just sit there and our dupes can pick it up when they want to eat. It's not the most perfect system, but it's quick, simple and easy to put together at this stage of the game. And I'm going to switch over to refrigerators because I can squeeze three of them there instead of uh, just one ration box. There we go. Automated food storage all set up. Quick, simple, easy to do. Eh, I like getting that all out of the way with. Now, oh, this over here, is it almost full? Let's see if this works. The theory being this. When this hits 100%, 100%, uh, that should switch to a red signal coming out. And when it hits a red signal coming out, this should zoom to this location and give us that noise. So to help with that, let's just grab this polluted water and hit sweep, shall we? If we hit sweep, then it should get dumped over there. I'll cancel the sweeping for now. Whoa. Okay, yep, that works. That definitely works. It's a little bit more than I was expecting. Let's uh, let's take off the zoom. Uh, that's a... Uh, yeah, that, I'm going to call that a 100% success. In fact, no, that's it. That's a 10,000% success. I will never forget to delete the water tank to make sure it off gases. Uh, one moment while I uh, annoy, avoid this annoying sound. The only downside about this is every time I delete it and reinstall it, I'm going to have to, well, redo all the... I'm going to have to redo the automation again. So I think I may have a way around that. There, modifications completed. This is just going to be set up so that once this tank fills, and this tank fills, and they'll fill one after the other, once uh, the first three tanks are completely full of polluted water, and this one backs up all the way to full, this will set off the alarm, at which point I can delete these two tanks. Once I delete these two tanks, the polluted water can start flowing again, I'll replace these two tanks again, and then the whole system should be reset without having to fiddle with any of these. I won't be deleting this tank. And this is just here as a buffer. Now. I should point out, this is a really rare system. It's very unlikely you're going to need this unless you're on Badlands and you really desperately need clay, which which we do, which is why I'm going to be off-gassing all my toilet water for the foreseeable future. Wow, that off-gas is at an incredible rate. Look at that. That's like kilos per second almost. Wow. What's the... Uh, let's have a quick look at the germ overlay. The... It used to be that polluted water with germs in it, like there's millions of germs in that, used to off-gas germs as well, but as far as I can see, eh, oh no, there is, there's some food germs in that. Eh, not bad. But I think that's going to help with our oxygen problems. Well, we don't have any problems, but that's going to help with oxygen and a lot of other things. Eh, all the food in there is obtained. Time to hmm, figure out how we're going to root the piping for this back. We want to root these through the coal biome and then right back out again. And we should get cooled oxygen for our base. Uh, that looks sort of reasonable. We're going to root them in here, curl around, and then come right back out again and straight at the top. So I might want to make a ladder just a little bit more to the left there, you know, just so we can get all of them all the way out. At the same time, over here, I've been looking at this. Yeah, this is a bit warm. Also, can we keep more steel? Yes, we can. We have 10 kilos of lime from all our eggshells that we're making. And I wanted to put it in a temp shift plate. This is a temp shift plate made out of ice. We have several of them, so let's just... Uh, Let's just cool down our water tank. That should put us well below the 20 deg 20, 30 degree mark so that our crops have no fears. And what's our food looking like? Wow. I uh, I set pickled meal lice to be made just so we could preserve any of those, uh, that uh, meal lice that was going around. Blueprint. Steel again. You know, I love this game right now. It just keeps giving me steel. Never going to complain. 100 kilos of steel. Never a bad deal. There we go. That should take care of any minor temperature problems we were having. Yeah, everything's down below 30 degrees again. As we keep going across, yeah, it plummets a lot of it. Now, there was some math that was saying making ice into temperature shift plates is not as efficient. You're better off letting it melt. I could, but it's a handy way to transfer an awful lot of temperature around very quickly. Uh, though I might want to put a little bit more over there. We have been making quite a bit of steel, haven't we? How do we have two? Oh, we got five kilos of lime. More on the way. So if I wanted to make this thing entirely self-contained, I'm going to need a lot more steel. Uh, for down here, we're making radiant pipes to go around the anti entropy fire. This is uh, not really that great. This will not be able to handle three kilos of oxygen. Not even close, but we might as well take advantage of it while we got it here. We're going to be dumping 90 sea water in here, so yeah, we're going to need as much cooling as we can, at least early on. Right, that looks like a lovely, glorious, messy, beautiful thing. 
Um, right, how is this working or what's going on? Gases come out of here. This is the oxygen. It's going to go through here. We're going to set up some cooling down here in this ice biome. Then it will come back out again. And then we're going to have it rotate past these uh, hydrogen generators. The hydrogen generators are made out of iron ore. I do not have enough steel to make all the hydrogen generators out of um, steel. The transformers I've left out of... Um, wait, is that power transformer iron ore? Damn it. I should have made the power transformers out of steel. Never mind. We'll leave it there for now. But then these gas pipes are going to go all the way across here. I've put in some gas tanks so that this one fills in the first one, this one goes in the second one, this one goes in the third, just so that we can run it really fast at the start and run it until it's clean. Same with the hydrogen. The hydrogen is going to come at the top here, and it's going to immediately get shunted off into this tank. It's going to be a big mess of oxygen and hydrogen at the start, so it'd be nice if we just dumped it off in there. You know what, let's get rid of that gas vent. Uh, ooh, uh, maybe take a little bit of that out. Then when we're finished and we've got the... Ooh... You know what? I'll go to that research in a minute. Uh, when we're finished and we've uh, managed to clean out the system, then the hydrogen will go around here and into the hydrogen generators. It's uh, sealed hydrogen or insulated gas piping, so they won't they won't cause any problems with the hydrogen generators, as in they won't be dumping in heat here. So we should be able to wick away, wick away the heat using the cooling we get from over here. Well, that's a theory. I've never tried running one of these without gold amalgam before, so I guess we're going to find out. And... Uh, Lime. Oh, it's like the game knows me. It knows me so well. Yeah, I'll take that lime. Uh, how much steel can we make out of that? Let's see. So, 16 pieces of steel. Yes. Yes, I will take it. I don't need it anymore, but I'm still going to take it. At the same time, all of that gas piping is going on. That's, that's a ludicrous amount of gas piping. We're also running an enormous water pipe. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the salt water from over there and run it all the way across. And over to the system over here, and okay, I made a mistake there. I need to hook up a, uh, mm, I need to hook up a desalinator, don't I? Yeah, we need to put it in some refinement there, and throw in a desalinator. And why can't I see one? But first, first we're going to research a desalinator because that would be very important, considering the only source of renewable water we have so far is is you know uh, salt water. Shut up, Glenn. I'm snoring. Uh, we do have a bunch of carbon dioxide down here, and I was thinking, why not hook up one of the little uh, food things? What we have here is we're going to filter out the carbon dioxide that's down here. Some of it still escapes down to this side of the map. It's not the end of the world, but we're going to take that carbon dioxide, feed it into a canister filler, and take that canister filler, and maybe try and feed that into a soda fountain. So we'll grab a soda fountain and put it over there. Oh, I think we got to pump water into that as well. How do we need this? Not really. But it does mean I can potentially get rid of the carbon dioxide that it get, collects down here. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just curious to see how it works out. I've put in a little uh, gas filter to make sure that we filter out anything that's not carbon dioxide. At the same time, I've put in a little automation sensor here to make sure that anything that does end up down here is carbon dioxide. Or the gas pump won't switch on unless there's carbon dioxide up to this point down here. We'll see how that works out. Oh, uh, and that does not look like, that looks like it needs an extra little tile to make sure it's stable. So, I think we're going to have to wait a while here. We've got an awful, 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 awful lot of building queued up. And this is why things take, this is, yeah, this is just side project heaven for me. Uh, let's, let's skip it forward quite substantially while our duplicates catch up with all of this. Oh, while that is going on, we've got a smooth hatchling egg showing up. That's perfectly normal and to be expected. They need to go and immediately be added to our list of uh, evolutions. So, we'll get all of them. Done. Perfect. Now they'll all end up down here. Eggs-wise, we've got 14 hatchlings, 10 stone hatchlings, and one smooth hatch egg all down there. And we're constantly churning out about, say, one stone hatch egg every cycle will hatch. So, one hatch a cycle. Yeah, I think soon we're going to have our, uh, our barbecue go up and we're going to be able to rip out all of those bristle blossoms. But... Not just yet. Oh, uh, what was that? That sounded like printables. Poke shell. Yeah, I'm taking the poke shell. Poke shells mean more molt, more everything. So I'm going to have to keep an eye out here for when this one lays an egg. What age is it? 47. Yeah, I need to make an egg drop off, don't I? Somewhere to store them safely out of the way where they can't cause us any harm. Ah, I know just the spot. I think down here will be perfect. And done. 
Uh, the little door here means all the eggs can drop through it. People are only allowed out, not in. Uh, we'll put this little drop off here and all pincher row eggs will get dropped down in here. We can't gain access to them, but we don't care. We just want to get the eggs out of the way so our dupes are not getting smacked by these. That'll move all the poke shells down there eventually. Uh, where were we? Oh yes, we were still doing this, weren't we? Let's see if our little, uh, our juicer has started working. Well, it's detected carbon dioxide. It's going to start pumping that up. That goes up to our little system there. How are the urns looking on this sucker? You know what? Let's, let's make it a nice high one. Go on, Vicky, grab it. Perfect. Okay, then. And there, Tahani's going to take it. Wow, okay. You should maybe slow down a bit. You look like you're a little bit zonked there. Yeah, perfect. Smell flowers means everyone's getting stressed. Yeah, there's uh, no stress reduction for that, but if you go into here, it gives a plus one to science. So soda filled gives you a plus one to your learning speed. Which, I mean, okay, it's it's not worth it. That's 480 watts, and I'm pretty sure I'm I'm going to redline my grid at some point. Uh, I haven't seen any... I uh, haven't had any alerts about breaks just yet, but it, it's going to happen. It will happen. Uh, over here, still not finished. Well, uh, in all fairness, I did give them an awful lot of job orders to do. I was just sweeping this up when I got a food shortage notification. Um, what the hell is going on? I have loads of hatch eggs. Hmm... I also kept the bristle blossom farms up and running. Did they stop or did they get, they didn't get stunted? They're still growing just fine. Oh, there's a crop about to come in in a very short period of time. You know what? We did keep some spare hatches up here that are idle, tame, and glum. Well, yeah, we might as well add those to the uh, pile of food we got. That's 8,000 calories right there. That should keep us going for another cycle. Oh, you. Did you just eat my meat? I will... Well, that was uh, probably not my smartest move. You know what? We'll just have to get creative with them then, won't we? Let's see if we can't uh, cut down on their population. Any, anyone eat that meat? How about you? You want to eat that meat? Yeah, that's fine. I'll tell you what. We'll eat you after you eat him. There we go. All the meat. Perfect. And yeah, we had a bunch of bristleberries come in as well. So that all worked out. Though not very smart on my part. Uh, we're just going to... Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? You should be going to the local sweeping spot. But you're not. You're delivering off the granite to... Ah, oh, Okay, you know what? We are going to make all of these level 6. I just want them to do a local sweep. If they have to start running across the map to drop stuff off, it will take them forever to clear this place out. And oh my god, I left the gas pumps on. Hmm. My bad. If the pressure is above... Uh, 20,000... You can turn on. Otherwise, don't do anything. Do you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, and I managed to destroy all <laughs> the hydrogen generators because I was pumping through a bunch of pointless gas into them. Ah, genius, Francis. Just absolute genius. Hmm. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll skip this forward a bit until I'm finished cleaning up my messes. So I was wondering why it was taking me so long to get all of that stuff out of there. But I realized, yeah, I was also pulling stuff from other storage containers around the map. But never mind, never mind. We have finally sealed it up and we're ready to switch it on. Actually, wait, we're not quite ready. How's the desalinator? Yeah, the desalinator's hooked in. I put up a couple of kettle coal generators onto this. That is powering the liquid pump over here that's pumping over the water. It also powers half of the Rodriguez. The other half powers this end. So, let's fire it up, shall we, and see how we've got it working. Mm, I think to start it up, we're just going to plug in the water. That should be all we need to do, and then need to set the sensors on this. Uh, what did I set them to on my last video? 450 up top, and 750 down bottom. All right. So, if the temperature is above 750, activate, and if the temperature is above, pressure is above 450, activate. Right, where's our water? Nowhere? Why, why is our water not moving? What am I doing wrong? Disabled by automation grid? How did I manage that? Never mind. Just one moment, please. There we go. That should be, what, over four kilos of water? That should be more than enough to run this whole system. And it has begun. But there's going to be a bit of mess in there. Wrong gases are going to come at the wrong location. We've got everything coming at the hydrogen end, coming at the top, being siphoned off to the side. We don't want that going into our hydrogen generators and causing a mess. Uh, yes, that should hopefully sort itself out quite quickly. Oh, as you can see, hydrogen has managed to even out its pressure. We now have 
only hydrogen coming out the top. Perfect. That means we can plug those into the hydrogen generators. Well, also down here. I'm planning on dumping a bunch of that hydrogen into the... Oh, there we go. And I forgot to put in a battery, didn't I? Yep, that... Just all the good stuff today on my end. Uh, battery goes in there. We have... Wow, we have two tons of steel. Okay, we've been making quite a lot of that stuff. Food shortage again? Oof. I think there's just an egg about to pop. I think we're just hitting that point where we're starting to get over the cusp. How many hatches have we got? Eight. 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 Oh my god. Eight. Four. We're four short of having... Like, we only need... 24, but 24 working at full capacity. They're just sort of streamlining and coming along a line, and it takes them 20 cycles before they spin up to speed, because that's how long it takes the wild hatching, or the eggs to hatch on their own without incubators. I think, though, yeah, I think we should be fine. If it gets any worse, there is some emergency measures I can take. I have, let's see, we can activate, I've activated mush bars, just to make sure that we can get some extra calories in, just in case, but I think we're going to be good. Let's just uh, throw this in here, hook up some automation to it. And make sure we don't mess this up. Oh, and the gate is trying to give us something. I heard the noise. Where did you go? New printables are available. Uh, copper. Yes, perfect. We're not taking any dupes at the moment for some reason. Probably that flashing food shortage sign. But at least oxygen's almost done. All right. Boom. How are we looking? Perfect. It will be self-sustained. It will take care of itself. We've got full pipes of oxygen. Hydrogen. Okay, we haven't backed up any of that yet, but that can be sorted. We can deconstruct that gas tank. We don't need any more. You can also be deconstructed. Gone, gone, and gone. Time to distribute the oxygen to our base, but that will be for a later episode. I think for today, we're going to cut it out here. I definitely need to maybe get some emergency food going. I might have to cram into a bunch of mush fry just to tie this over until all those eggs come online. But we have so many hatchlings eggs and stone hatchlings eggs. This should not be a problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this trip down uh, Badlands and uh, good luck.